Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. So the paid request for a film that I've definitely heard about throughout the years, but surprisingly had never seen until now. That's Air Bud from 1997. But before I go on, if anyone wants to request any type of videos, PayPal is usually the best bet. Or join my Patreon. Links are in the info box. Again, PayPal is usually the best bet. And it'll be for anything, a review, a topic, reaction, a commentary, re-review, a tier list, anything to do with video games, playthrough, let's try. Feel free. Links are in the info box. But Air Bud is directed by Charles Martin Smith, which he's a very interesting director for the variety of films he does. Because he did do family films like this or Dolphin Tale. Then they'll do a horror film before, like, Trick or Treat, the heavy metal one. Or a fun action film like 50-50 with Peter Well and Robert Hayes, which deserves a Blu-ray. So, definitely a variety of stuff he's done. And, of course, Charles Martin Smith been an actor. He was the character Toad in American Graffiti and the sequel, more American Graffiti. <clears throat> I think he was in Starman. He was in 5050, the film he directed, and a few other stuff as well. The Untouchables. I think he was like the accountant or something. The the smaller guy was part of the group with Kevin Costner and Sean Connery. And the film itself is really based on this dog that they were able to get, who was named Buddy, who sadly died like a year after this film from some type of cancer so when they do the sequel uh air bud golden receiver that's not the same dog it's a different dog so that was too bad to hear i guess the dog was like nine years old when it passed away i didn't have some type of i forget the exact cancer term but apparently it was like on America's Funniest Home Videos, like that type of stuff, and then it got a bit of popularity, and hey, let's showcase it for the script, the story about, yeah, the circus clown, played by Michael Jeter, who I remember he was on the TV show Evening Shade with Burt Reynolds, he was the guy with the mouse in the Dream Mile, he was in Jurassic Park 3, he's been a lot of stuff, oh, he was in Tango and Cash, or Kurt Russell was shooting up his sound equipment, with a shotgun. As he's been a lot of stuff. He plays this drunk prick clown. Who's not doing a great job. But his dog. Who's a circus clown. Can do well. Bounce stuff off his nose. The kids like it. So driving home one day. Not paying attention. Bumping over the road. The terrier with the dog. Falls off. And it gets out because someone else with their car hits it. I mean, lightly bumps it enough to let it open. And that belongs to our characters, our lead characters. You have the mom character. She has a very young daughter. And then has a son, probably... I don't know, 12, 14, I forget what age. And that's played by Kevin Zeters, who was in, I think, the next couple Air Bud films. I know he's in the second film. Might have been in the third one as well. And I think he was actually one of the characters in Frozen, the Adam Green film with Sean Ashmore, where the people are stuck on the ski lift. I think he's one of those... I think there's three people, and he, I think he's one of the three. I believe it's him. And he plays a kid whose father's passed away, and the mom and has moved the family to this place. I think he's supposed to be in Washington. And he doesn't have many friends, and he's new at school. He loves basketball, but the coach kind of puts him as the equipment manager so it's not much but he does it because he loves basketball 
he makes this homemade hoop until hears something in the bushes. It's a dog. Puts some pudding out to come closer to trust him. And they bond. Does it, the dog lights the ball, hangs out with the kid. Then the kid realizes that the dog did actually hit the ball and go into the basket. It's like, whoa. And the movie goes on from there. I thought it was weird that when the mom hits the carrier, granted, lightly bumps it, she doesn't get out of the car to see what was in it. Now, if you hit anything in the road of uh, like this, most of us would get out of the car, and like the kid sees that it's a dog, so the kid doesn't tell the mom, Mom, there's a dog. Was there a dog in there? So the kid never says anything. Because, kid, you don't know if that dog's been hurt. If if anything's happened to it. I think you put two and two together, like, were you in there? If the mom went around and looked, she could have seen. And no, instead the mom's like, are you guys okay? Okay, let's go. It keeps on driving. So you didn't even see, like, what it was, what was in it. Take it off the road so nobody else hits the damn thing that's in the road. Because it's still in the middle of the road. But, okay. So, good job. Mama character. <laughs> what the hell? Now, throughout the film, like, the kid is trying to, you know, deal with... with stupid duck. I know, there's an animal farm here. There's ducks, there's gooses, there's geese. There's chickens, all sorts of things. Maybe the duck's bad, he's died in the movie. Sorry, it's dogs only. Okay. Maybe there's going to be that bird and dolphin tail. No, that's the different movie. And it's not you, so shut up. But as I was saying, before I got really interrupted by an asshole, Donald Duck over there, The kid is just trying to deal with school. Of course, you have the bully. I recognize the bully. It's Brendan Fletcher. And for those who don't know who that is, he played... Remember Freddy vs. Jason? You had the, the lead guy. Was it Jason Ritter? John Ritter's son? He had a buddy in the asylum, and the buddy was like, you know, spreading his cheats to the guards and doing all this silly stuff that's Brendan Fletcher he's the one that had the dream and Freddy kills him one of the only people Freddy kills in the movie he was also the star of Uwe Boll's Rampage trilogy he's been in other films as well so I'm like oh crap that's him as the bully and then you have this maintenance worker janitor who uh, played by Bill Cobbs may he rest in peace he was in Demolition Man. He's the one talking with Stallone. They finally grounded me. Who used to be a helicopter pilot back in John Spartan's timeline, but now he's a much older police officer. And Bill Cobb's been a lot of stuff, but that's the what I think of the most from. He's in this. You know, good actor. We find out that he used to be a basketball player, but he's kind of nonchalant about it. And pretty much the rest of the movie is the do is the boy hanging out with the dog, them becoming friends. Uh, during the game, the dog coming out and realizing, okay, the dog can do certain things. He's gonna be the new mascot, and that's mainly used for a mascot function for a good chunk of it does that like i said i had not seen this film so i thought the entire time it was going to be all oh, the dogs gonna be on the court the whole time no that's only till the end of the film so i was kind of surprised that for most of it, it was just as a mascot like the halftime show he do so he could bounce a ball to the basket for the halftime show and i will say what I did not mind about the film, and overall I did like it, was Charles Martin Smith knew 
that if you don't do this kind of film to try to have a bit of heart to it I thought he did that I, I thought he did that and that's what helped it stand out a bit from say the sequel which I'll get to because uh, that was also a request I got funny enough recently but and apparently there's like a ton of these movies there's after the second one there's like a soccer one and maybe a volleyball one I don't know if there's a baseball one and that's not even getting into like Santa Buddies Space Buddies Snow Dogs or Snow Buddies I mean Snow Buddies Butt Buddies I don't know what other buddies there are but apparently there's a lot of buddies movies which is funny I remember at the video store when I worked there I would see these films but I guess I never really put two and two together that they were connected with these films. I don't know why. They're called Buddy, but I don't know. I just thought it was like rip-offs. Well, they're called Buddies, and there's more than one, so you can't sue. I don't know. But, uh, what I like, I mean, like I said, the heart of it, and also that the, the family itself were not typical, mean, brat, bitchy, what I mean by that is, usually in this kind of film, the mom would be judgmental. She does say, oh, well, I don't know about keeping the dog, but, like, in a natural sense, like a mom would. Not like a movie witch bitch way that's over the top or melodramatic. Um, and that granted, out of the blue, she kind of changes her mind and says, at Christmas, yeah, you can have this dog. Would have been nice to have a couple scenes to showcase her. Like there's one time she sees her kid and the, the dog playing. But maybe like a few things where maybe the dog goes up to her. Maybe she's sitting down like the dog lay, you know, lies his head on her lap and she pets it. Maybe a few things like that. A few more moments. Would have made that a bit smoother of a transition. Of her changing her mind, you don't. It's Christmas if you keep the dog. That's a nitpick, but yeah, just something I would like to have seen. But yeah, I like that the mom is very supportive. She's very supportive of the kid. Not like, you need to not worry about this. Worry about school or blah blah blah. No, she's a supportive mom. I like that the kid is not a brat. That's one of the mistakes they make in the sequel. Is that they make him a brat all of. Because, okay, his dad passed away, but there's going to be a lot of whining, there's going to be a lot of complaining, there's going to be a lot of uh, bratty behavior, which you could understand because of the death of his dad, but at the same time, it's something we've seen so many times. No, he's pretty quiet in his shell, comes out of his shell to the dog, and then becomes a basketball player. This kind of dark moment where they witness the coach... Which I recognize the actor. I don't know what else he's been in. But like this kid I just couldn't catch the ball. So he keeps throwing the ball to the Come on you gotta catch it. You gotta catch it. I'm like Jesus what is this whiplash? But uh, then they, they fire his ass. And Bill Cobbs becomes the coach. So again I like that. It's not. Again the kid is not bratty. He's likable enough. Treats the dog well. Why wouldn't he treat it well? Again, there are some movies where it's like... Sometimes they treat the other per <laughs> animal character pretty harshly. Like, maybe you don't deserve this dog. <laughs> but that's not the case here. And yeah, not all the humor works. I mean, there's a running dad where the dog keeps taking her newspaper... Which is kind of cute, but, you know, wasn't hilarious, but, you know, it's kind of cute. I don't know why the dog kept doing that and burying the newspaper, but just did. Or someone who Kevin Zader's character meets on the basketball team, he's, like, very superstitious. So, he, like, he has an orange peel that Scotty Pippen threw away. You could have my lucky charm. <clears throat> okay, it is what it is. I mean, you know. It's not that I laughed a lot. 
or was hilarious, but like, okay, whatever. Didn't make me mad either. At least I was surprised that they didn't go more with the dog being on the court. Like, okay, this kind of makes a bit more sense. They would use the dog as a mascot. As a halftime show. Uh, the Michael Jeter stuff is probably the stuff I was less interested in. Because he comes back, notices the popularity, but he's getting, has papers, that animal belongs to me. The kid gets upset, understandably enough, to have to go to the big championship game. Before that, he rescues the dog, takes the dog out, you're free, go wherever you need to go. I just thinking that if I bring you home, he can find you there again and take you back again. But the dog goes, you have the big championship game. It's predictable, yes, so it's predictable. You know, okay, someone gets hurt, more, too many people get hurt, and what pre pretty much you, we've been waiting for, the dog's going to be on the team. Ain't no rules the dog can't play basketball. I'm like, I think there are, but it's a movie, so you go along with it. And I will say the dog, like, the way the dog had been trained is impressive. Because, and that's one of the issues I have with the sequel. Like, okay, a dog catches a ball. That just doesn't seem as impressive to me. Because that's what you know, playing catch is with your dog. Most people do that with a dog. Go get it, go get it. Now granted, you're throwing it away from it and then it brings it back to you. But if the dog's far away and you do it, it's going to try to catch it. Here, the fact, okay, the ball is going to bounce the ball away, like stealing it or passing it. The fact it bounced the ball off its head. And there are wide shots where the doll like bounces the ball and the, the basketball goes in the hoop. Like, there's wide shots of it. That's impressive. Kind of like a seal. Seal bounces. Like, that's impressive. That but oh, okay, that's cool to see. The animal circus type of tricks on that. So yeah, that was nice to see. It's a pretty short film, so it doesn't overstay his welcome. Of course, they win the game. Michael Jeter comes in. You have this courtroom scene that goes on a bit too long because we know where it's going. And really, enough, that seems sillier to me than the dog playing basketball. But it's like, okay, buddy, pick who you want to be. And I'm like, why would the dog ever want to pick Michael Jeter? His head goes up and wants to bite it, so of course it goes to the kid. I'm like, of course, why w This is not, su it's, you're not suspenseful. There's no way that the dog is going to go back to Michael Jeter, so. It's just uh, a means to end the get rid of that plot to Michael Jeter, so. We have to find a way to finish it, so here we go. I mean, I would say that was the least interesting part of me. I like Michael Jeter as an actor, but. I mean, that stuff. I mean, honestly, a part of me would just rather have Michael Jeter at the beginning and then never see him again. He lost the dog. We never see him again. I just don't have that in there, but I know they wanted to have a little bit more drama. So, that's why. So, I get why, but I don't know. It just, I get it, just wasn't the most intriguing. Uh, the stuff on the basketball court, I love basketball, love the sport of basketball, so uh, I'm always interested in seeing basketball movies or documentaries and stuff, even f uh, as a kid's film. Like I said, Kevin Zeters, uh, I thought, did a decent job. I, did, I like that they didn't write him to be this bratty, whiny kid, which he has every right to be because of the death of his dad, but I'm glad they didn't go that route. So it made him much more tolerable. Also, the little, they have like the little baby sister. I'm surprised they didn't have it where she was like annoying or irritating or trying to annoy her brother or, or the brother and sister don't get along. No. 
she's pretty much a non-character, really. Just the tis happy, tis her on the head, and she's like, huh, well, why'd you do that? You know. So I was actually surprised. I thought for some reason that Tater, she was going to be a character, but she's not really. So it's like little things that, you know, I've just seen repeated so many times in other family films. I'm glad they didn't repeat here. And the daughter was cute. Like, the doll was cute. It was well-trained. Again, some impressive stuff. And it's, you know, again, with the heart, it's trying to showcase Bill Cobbs being a good role model, good coach. And when it came out, you know, it made, I think it cost a couple million, and it made about, I don't know, 20, 27, 28 million, maybe 24, like somewhere around there. So it's definitely profitable, which is why they did so many of them. And overall, it's it's fine. As a family film, a kid's film, it's fine. It's harmless. There's no fart jokes. There's no stupid juvenile jokes like that. Uh, it's very family friendly for the kids. And like I said, it's sad that the, the dog uh, passed away a year after this. That, that was a bit of a bummer looking that up and finding that out. I'm like, damn, well, that sucks. But uh, yeah, Air Bud. I don't know if this is on Blu-ray. Um, I mean, I wouldn't pick it up. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a film I'd probably watch again, but it was fine to watch one time. So, it was it was fine as a family film. Because, it again, its heart was in the right place. The acting was decent, and the dog was cute. And, well, you know, these basketball trips, trips were, were neat to see. So... With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.